Let's talk about something that you've been dealing with for some time. I just dealt with recently with the yes. Xbox One S review, and that is HDR. So, so cats. Yeah, that was a trial by fire, huh? Explain. It took us like you know, two hours ago, I think. So it was crazy. Yeah. What is HDR for people who don't know? What is so, HDR10? What is Dolby Vision? What is all that junk? So the first thing, though, know, HDR is high dynamic range. Okay. Just like the HDR setting on your phone, the name, but very much nothing like it in reality. <laughs> okay. So don't confuse it with HDR on your phone or photography or whatever with those crazy effects. And, you know, they even have video games back in the day that had HDR effects you turn on or off. It's like, why couldn't they use a different three-letter combination? No, super high dynamic range is what I told them to use, and they didn't want to use it. Well, I don't understand yeah. that. Okay. Um, so anyway... HDR is what we're stuck with, right. and right now in the market, there's actually two different formats of HDR. There's okay. HDR10, which is just called HDR, generic HDR, and then there's Dolby Vision, which of course, uh, everybody knows Dolby, right. uh, kind of runs the show with audio and theatrical video and pretty much everything in Hollywood. So they have a big name brand advantage. Uh, these two formats are not mutually exclusive, so okay. you can have a TV that supports both, or you can have a TV that supports one or the other. Right now, Sony... Samsung, and most everybody else, except for Vizio and LG, only support HDR10. Vizio and LG support Dolby Vision. They paid, you know, Dolby, uh, you know, their, their licensing fee. They have this ability to take these Dolby Vision titles and play them. So right now you can get HDR from Netflix okay. if you have one of these TVs. Right. You can also get it from Amazon. They support it as well. Both guys support both formats. Good. So if you have a Sony TV, it'll just get a little thing that says HDR. But if you have a Vizio or LG TV, it'll say Dolby Vision because they prioritize Dolby Vision if gotcha. the TV can do both. And then Vudu, which is a service that Walmart runs that's similar, they only have Dolby Vision right now, which is interesting. Huh. So and there's different studios that support different ones. I've looked at both. The difference is really hard to tell right now. I think we might see some more differences emerge as the master studios figure out how to sure. make, it, make it pop a little bit more. But the real thing to know is that any HDR really is a, a good picture quality improvement. Right. And you and I were watching it. You yes. can tell the difference. There a is bit. a difference. Yeah. It's subtle. Yeah. It's there, though. It's not going to blow your mind. It's right. not, I mean, remember when people, when HD first came out, people were like, well, standard def and HD are not that different. Or, you know, my Blu rays look a lot like my DVDs. It's not as drastic of a difference as that. It's, there's a so, diminishing return sort of thing. Absolutely. Because yeah. at the end of the day, regular Blu ray looks freaking phenomenal. Yeah. So an HDR Blu-ray looks even better, provided that your TV is good enough to make it look better. Right, and that's where so, it gets a little cloudy, right? Like, yeah. Like we just discussed, every TV manufacturer seems to have like a different sort of idea of like what they want to support. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that like someone could buy a TV and get screwed out of the format that ends up maybe winning this sort of situation? So I think what's going to happen, and this is pretty pretty standard it, HDR10 is is required by the uh, by the, the the consortium that came with 4K Blu-ray okay so it's it's if if there's a 4K Blu-ray disc out there which is the only way to get HDR uh, you know aside from streaming right now mm. it's going to be uh, HDR10. So, and and every TV out there, Vizio literally last this week rolled a firmware update that allowed their TVs to work with HDR10. Okay, so great. Now, all these HDR TVs all work with 4K. So you can't get screwed. Right. So you're not going to get screwed. But there is a possibility that for whatever reason, Dolby Vision stuff might look better. Or if, for example, you want to watch something on Vudu that's Dolby Vision only, right. For as long as they maintain that exclusive, although I don't think it's going to be very long. So you might actually end up, uh, if you have a TV that can't do Dolby Vision, not being able to see all the available content. That's the case right now for okay. Sony and Samsung viewers. But it's not that big of a deal because that stuff is also available on other services and non-Dolby Vision. So I think these two are going to coexist a little bit like DTS and Dolby Digital, which are the two audio formats that every receiver they can They coexist. Now. Yeah, and, and, it, and it all works. You know? But there isn't, uh, there's very few receivers out there that are only one or the other right, right now. So I think next year, the year after, you're going to start seeing TVs that will do both like LG and Vizio do this year. So. Okay, so this doesn't necessarily have to do anything with HDR, but mm -hmm. it is in your realm. The question I get asked a lot by people who are the sort of layman of mm -hmm. the tech world, my basically my friends. Yeah, um, wonderful and I, people. What's that? Wonderful people. Wonderful people, yeah, but just don't necessarily know how, which side of the Blu-ray is has the data on it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the question I get asked the most is, when do we stop being able to see difference in resolution. You mean like how close do you have to be? No, no, no. Like after 4K, 
will be 8K. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? No, well, that's 16K? That's, we're already there. Well, no. <laughs> I feel like we're there. I feel like 8K, from what I, I've read, a few sort of like ophthalmologist, you know, expert sort of, your brain's just simply not going to know the yeah, difference yeah, yeah, after yeah. a it's while. It's my chart thing. Is it 8K? Like 8K seems vision. to be well, the threshold. The thing is, H, it's, it's actually already happening because if unless you're sitting really close to mm. a 4K TV, you're not going to see the difference right. between really good 1080p, which is Blu-ray, right. and 4K, yeah. because your eyes are not sharp enough to resolve the difference. Right. Plus, moving video is a lot more difficult to resolve, and the fact is, you know, it's not going to be the very highest quality anyway. Sure. So, if you look at Netflix 4K versus 1080p Blu-ray, often the Blu-ray looks better, because right. there's less compression, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not about the, the number of pixels. And so, we say, like, when you have a 65-inch TV, unless you're sitting, like, six feet, seven feet away from it, which is hella close to yeah. a gigantic TV like totally. that, you just can't see the difference for most people. If you have great vision, sure, you'll see the difference. If you're watching really high-quality content, sure, you'll see a little difference. But again, 1080p Blu-ray looks freaking awesome already. People, I feel like people want that feeling they got when they went from SD to HD. Yeah, it's not, it can't happen. You, just like you'll never create that first time you right. had a taste Which of the poison. Which is like, yeah, pulling off the clouds it's and never going, gonna wow, happen. this is amazing. And the other thing is, right now, even 4K is never, it, it's going to be a really long time before it's broadcast TV. Yeah, so sure. right now, TV broadcasters are barely doing 720p and 1080i. Yeah. And those are the high def formats. And once, you know, when, when are we going to get, there's some smattering of 4K stuff you can see on TV, but it's going to be a long time before they change all the trucks, the cameras, oh, the forget production it. stuff. Let's just skip and go to 20K and just be yeah, done it, with at it. At this point, it, it, you wouldn't see a difference. You wouldn't see a difference. But that's guys, not going to oh. stop them from coming out with it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> how, how long do you think, Agent 79 or Chaz are wondering, like, how long do you think even this HDR thing would last? Because if he, he wants to buy a TV, mm -hmm. he wants to make sure that it's actually a good investment for him. And I guess he'd be worried that like HDR, it was just going to replace the next best thing. Yeah, HDR is a big deal. I, I, the thing is, we spent a lot of time crapping all over 4K because you really couldn't see the difference. With, with HDR, you can see a difference. There yeah. is a difference because it's not resolution, which is basically limited by your eyesight and the seating distance more color and the size now. of the TV. Yeah. It's, you, you mentioned wide color gamut. That's a really, it's a difference. You can see it when you look at, you know, the, the trees look greener. There's, right now the HD standard is pretty limited in the color. It's based in like, you know, the 70s and earlier in terms right. of what the TVs could reproduce. They're a lot better now. They can get a lot wider color. That's in HDR and then the dynamic range, which makes, you know, highlights glint and it makes the, the clouds look more defined. Things yes. like that that are, again, relatively subtle. Subtle. But, but it's, an, it's much more of an improvement than from going 1080p to 4K. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. You showed me a scene in, in The Revenant yeah. that is very, very By indicative. By the way, The Revenant is the best home video content I've ever seen, period. Wow. The 4K Blu-ray of The Revenant is unbelievable. It's Cut. Yeah, because he just did a great job of filming it in HDR, in, yeah. out, in, in natural lighting. In you know, understanding. If you haven't seen yeah. that film, treat yourself. It, huh. it, it, even on a 1080p, you know, regular TV, it looks it's phenomenal. It's so are movies filmed, like, specifically in HDR? Or do you think they film, like, a couple resolutions above and then bring it Well, again, down? HDR is not necessarily about resolution. It's about the capturing of, of the dynamic range, which is, again, the, the range from, from absolute white to dark. And it's also capturing the color. And all these cameras now, all these digital cameras, can, Aris and Sony, all these the Hollywood cameras are way capable of capturing. Totally, it's that transfer. Yeah, so getting that whatever the camera can see right. to your screen is the, is the question. That's what HDR comes closer to than current 1080p. Correct me if I'm wrong. HDR in a nutshell when it comes to the dynamic range sort of stuff, mm -hmm. the analogy I, I tried to give somebody was like, okay, let's say you had like 10 shades of darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Like 10 shades of gray. Okay, HDR gives you 1,000. Yeah. For for all intents and purposes, like that, you're basically getting the ability to see that much more of a difference between total white and total mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, it it expands the range and expand it, it it increases the number of steps in that range. Right. Like f stops on a camera sure. is one of the analogies that they use. But it also makes the top end of that range potentially a lot brighter. Sure. And so what you can do is have like if you envision like sun as a as a plane turns, sun strikes the the wing of the plane and it, this bright kind of pop. Yeah. HDR captures that. Uh, much better. I mean, HD can't capture it. Sure. So, and and, and the, the whole format is designed to, to transmit those highlights and give you that sort of feel. And that's why Revenant is so good because it's all outdoor natural lighting stuff sure. that you're used to seeing. And it's one of these things where if you see it side by side, it's like, wow, you know, it, it does make a difference. There's a difference. We'll get to...